Words that I never thought I would be saying on the Everyday Vopreneur podcast. We got to have a conversation about Voices.com. So for those of you that were at VO Atlanta, uh, particularly for those of you who sat in the online casting panel, uh, you probably had a little bit of a surprise, as did I, when the new interim CEO of Voices.com showed up on the stage to participate in that online casting panel. I was instructed that I had to be at the panel, but I had no idea why. Uh, as soon as he showed up on stage, all of a sudden it became abundantly clear why I had been instructed to be there. Uh, so let's do a, uh, a brief history of Voices.com, shall we? Uh, and, and particularly, I'll, I'll share a little bit of, of my brief history uh, with Voices.com. So I was actually kicked off of the platform a number of years ago, and the reason for it was I caught them taking some very substantial commissions on professional services projects. Uh, the blog post that I wrote that originally did me in was calling them out specifically for taking a 92.5% commission on a job. There were other examples of, you know, commissions in the 70s and, and 80% range. Um, but this particular one, I had, I had caught them taking a 92.5% commission on the project. We knew that because the job was posted for one rate on Voices.com. It was posted for a different rate on Voice123. And then I was able to figure out who the end client was. And I reached out to the end client to talk to them about it. And so I was able to confirm that, yes, in fact, Voices.com was taking a 92.5% hidden commission. The way that it was explained to me at the time, and this is going back a few years, keep in mind, but the way that it was explained to me at the time was it was written into the terms of service that if a client asked about the commissions, the commissions would be disclosed. But here was the sneaky way around that. If I am a client and I reach out to the platform to post my job, the professional services manager would reach out to me and say, hey, would you like me to take care of that project for you? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. Thank you. And that was all that was said. It wasn't, hey, would you like me to take care of this project for you? And here's how much it would cost. Or, hey, would you like me to take care of this project for you? And here's what the commission would be. And so because it was never stated that there was a cost or a commission, no client would probably ever think to actually ask if a commission was being taken. So because no clients were asking, Voices.com was able to get rid of it. And so hence we had... Uh, different examples of incredibly high commissions being taken. Now, keep in mind that these commissions are also on top of the annual membership fee that voice actors are required to pay, as well as the 20% escrow fee that is uh, deducted when the payment is made through Voices.com. So really, it was like a triple dipping. So I had called them out for this publicly, as I, as I mentioned, and... um. As a thank you for that, they banned me off the platform. And I really haven't had anything to do with Voices.com ever since, other than to say, when people ask me, just be careful what you sign up for. Now, I want to make it very clear that there are a lot of really honest clients who just want to get connected with good voice actors on the platform. And I will never fault a voice actor for being on the platform because of that reason. I advise or have always advised people, voice actors, to be very cautious of managed service or professional services projects because, as I told them, you can pretty much just assume that you're getting screwed on those projects. You can pretty much assume that whatever the budget is being offered, the actual real budget is probably significantly higher and voices is keeping the difference as a commission. So know what you're signing up for. Avoid those projects. Try to just work on the projects where it's you connecting directly with a client. I know you can't specifically connect directly with a client because you have to go to the platform, but you know what I'm saying. It's a one-to-one. -one. And of course, keeping an eye out for fair rates, which my understanding is those were getting more and more challenging to find on the platform as well. But, but honestly, I have had nothing to do with Voices.com for a number of years, uh, ever, ever since I got kicked off. But I was pretty surprised to see the new interim CEO at VO Atlanta. 
And there was a part of me that felt bad for him because whether he realized it or not, he was probably the most disliked man in the room. And it wasn't anything personal against him. It's just that there are a lot of voice actors with a lot of very strong feelings and emotions about Voices.com based on how poorly Voices.com has acted in the past. Um, many questions of morals and ethics and questionable business practices, customer service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that bubbling just below the surface, sometimes bubbling over. Um, and now this, this new gentleman was here on stage and, and he got to be the face of it, which is actually one of the things that I commended him for. Uh, and I did have the opportunity to have a conversation with him privately after the online casting panel. And I, and I did make that very clear that I respected the fact that he showed up. So he was invited to VO Atlanta, keeping in mind that Voices.com has not been allowed to participate in a number of conferences for a number of years because of, again, questionable business practices, ethics, ethics, et cetera. Um, so he was invited to have the opportunity to come to VO Atlanta but there were a couple of conditions of that visit, um, one of which was an apology to the community. And so this, uh, this gentleman, his name is Jay O'Connor, by the way, uh, Jay sat up on stage and he did just that. He apologized. He, uh, he said he wanted to apologize on behalf of the company for so many of the things that went down. And he actually went so far as to say that he would rate the company's handling of stuff in the past, an F, which I don't think anybody uh, would disagree with that assessment. And so I appreciated the fact that he was willing to get up there and, and say that and shoulder that. Keep in mind that the stuff that was going on, uh, m so many of the things that the voice actors are all upset about, that the community as a whole is so upset about, these are all things that happened long before Jay was ever a part of the company. Uh, so he kind of got dropped into the hornet's nest, uh, so to speak, um, but but he was willing to take it. Uh, he went on to say that he does believe that the mess of problems from the past have been cleaned up, and he would rate the company's effort in that as an A-, minus. but further to that, he said that he would rate the company's explanation of how everything has been handled as an F, and so he recognizes that there is better communication that needs to happen and greater transparency uh, you know within reason that needs to take place between voices.com and the community in order for that healing to take place and i saw what happened at vo atlanta as a good first step what ultimately happens time will tell but i took it for what it was which it was a really good first step Jay said that he was not aware of all of the things that had gone on when he took over as a CEO. And I believe that because, I mean, the problems were so vast and extensive. How could anybody possibly be aware of all of them? One of the things that he did say that I was particularly pleased with was that he has been actively engaging with Nava. And so again, shout out to Tim and Karin, uh, the heroes that we didn't know we needed, but uh, they have been there for us in so many different avenues. Um, rates, healthcare, AI, obviously now is a big one, and apparently engaging actively with Voices.com as well. And so I'm, I'm glad that Jay has been open to those conversations, listening to what Nava has to say, and I am grateful to Tim and Karin for being a part of that and, uh, you know, getting those conversations going. I don't want to go into everything that was discussed in the panel, but there were two particular issues that I felt like I wanted to bring up with you guys on the show because they were two that I, two parts of a conversation that I was directly involved in. Uh, and so I'm, I'm only comfortable speaking on the things that I was directly involved in. One of the things that was mentioned from the stage by Jay was that voices.com is attempting to use the GVAA rate guide. I think for a lot of voice actors who are on the platform, we 
you probably wouldn't necessarily agree with that statement yet. Um, but he says it's the direction that they're going. And I genuinely believe that. I genuinely believe that is the desire. Because keep in mind that if Voices.com is going to continue to charge a 20% escrow fee, then the higher the rate on the job, the more money Voices.com makes. 20% of 1,000 is more than 20% of 100. And so, you know, pure capitalism, uh, it is in their best interest for rates to go higher. So the comment was made that the GVA rate guide is, is you know, that is the goal. And the comment was also made that the GVA rate guide is what project managers are supposed to be using on managed services or professional services projects. That was where I came to the microphone to ask a question. And so I asked Jay directly to confirm you're telling me that the GVAA rate guide is used for professional services projects. And he said, to his knowledge, yes. At that point, I was able to give him the specs of a very specific project that had been posted on Voices.com late in February. And the specs of that project were for five 30-second ads, five 15-second ads, and five six-second ads. The client was looking for web usage in perpetuity and paid digital broadcast in perpetuity, but they were willing to consider a term of, I believe it was two to five years for the paid digital broadcast. Now, if you sit down and price that out on the GVA rate guide, you're going to come up with a number around $22,000, I believe was uh, the number that I came up with. And I think that was quoting for, uh, you know, two years of paid usage or something like that, but, but around $22,000. So this particular job was posted as a professional services project with a rate range of 2500 to 5000 which is obviously well below the GVA rate guide. But not only that, the project manager was trying to encourage the voice actor to compete against another talent who had quoted $3,100. So they were actually trying to drive the rate lower. So I shared all of this information with Jay in the panel, um, much, I think, probably to his surprise uh, and you know to the surprise of the community. And just to be clear, I was not trying to be a crusader. I was, I was not trying to call him out or make him look foolish. I was asking a genuine question and the, the, the response that I got was, you know, he, he would have to look into this particular project, which was fair. And my response was simply, perhaps there is an education component to this. If you've ever used the GVA rate guide, particularly on a, on a more complex project, a project where there's multiple usages, multiple ads, et cetera. Um, even as voice actors who use this thing day in and day out, sometimes it's really easy to get confused by the GVA rate guide. So am I going to immediately assume that they're not using the GVA rate guide and everything is a lie? No. Am I willing to assume that there's the possibility that there's a, a level of training that needs to take place in order to help them to understand how to use the GVA rate guide properly on, on projects like this? That's, I'm willing to accept that that is a possibility. And so that's where I left it. Again, I, it was not my intention to uh, humiliate him or call him out or position him as a liar. I don't think that at all. I don't, I, I don't think that he has any interaction whatsoever on a day-to-day -day basis with the projects that are going on. I think there are probably company policies in place and that it's just a matter of, are those company policies being followed and how well are those company policies being followed? So to Jay's defense, I did have the opportunity to meet with him privately for a few minutes after the, the panel. He did take the job ID because I had the job ID number. I gave it to him uh, and he took my phone number and he told me that he was going to look into it and that he would follow up with me when he had a response for me. Uh, so at the time of the recording of this podcast, I've not heard anything, which is fine. Uh, you know, busy guy, got a company to run. Um, but I genuinely got the sense that he was going to look into it. And again, coming back to, capitalism, regardless of how you feel about it, uh, it would be in their best interests. If that was a $22,000 job by the GVA rate guide, 
and a project manager was trying to get it quoted below 3000 that is just ridiculous from the company standpoint because they could have had the opportunity to get a 20% escrow fee on a $20,000 payday as opposed to a 20% escrow fee on a you know $3,000 payday. It doesn't actually make any sense. So regardless of how you feel about the escrow fee, in one way, that escrow fee potentially works in the favor of the voice actors when it comes to trying to get the rates driven higher. Let's talk about the escrow fee. Hugh Edwards, Gravy for the Brain, CEO, founder. Uh, Hugh Edwards came up and asked a question of Jay as well. And he specifically wanted to talk about the fees and, and talking about the double dipping. You're charging the talent, the annual membership, and then you are also charging them the escrow fee. And he wanted to know whether there was an opportunity for any kind of movement on that. I will say in this particular instance, I was slightly less impressed with the response we got. Um, the response was basically, these are our fees. And if you don't like them, then you can go somewhere else. Uh, and, and the market presents opportunities for you to go somewhere else. Um, probably not how I would have responded to the question, but I'm also not the CEO. So that's easy for me to say. Uh, I certainly took him up on his offer uh, by going somewhere else and not being a member of the platform uh, because I did have a problem with paying fees upon fees upon fees upon fees. Uh, so it is my belief based on that statement that the escrow fee is not going to go away. Um, at this point, I'm not particularly optimistic that the membership, the annual membership fee is going to change or, or go away either. However, I do think that it would be in their interest to eliminate one of those fees. If they were going to eliminate one of those fees, my guess is that it would actually be the annual fee because going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you're going to charge a 20% escrow fee, then if you raise the rates to adhere to GVAA standards, your 20% escrow fee on GVAA standard rates is going to more than make up for the money that you are losing in the annual membership fee. Even if you just greatly reduced the annual membership fee. Now, you know, it's easy for me to say I'm an outsider looking in. Obviously, uh, I'm biased towards the voice actor side of the equation, but, you know, the math makes sense. So, are we going to start seeing GVAA rate guide projects across the board on Voices.com? Um, at this point, I would say I am not overly optimistic, but I'm certainly intrigued by the idea because it does make sense financially for Voices.com's bottom line. And you have to remember that Voices.com is now owned by a, a, a basically a bank, large investment company, large investment arm, um, and revenue and profit are going to be the primary driver. Uh, that's business. Uh, so if I'm looking for ways to increase revenue and profit, I mean, you're a business owner as a voice actor. What do you do when you need to make more money? You either find more work or you charge more for the work that you're doing. It, it, you know, that's business 101. So is it in Voices.com's best interest to start using the GVAA? 100% it is. And would that be in the best interest of the community? Of course it would be. Would the community be willing to overlook some of the fees if we were consistently getting GVAA rates on some of these projects? My guess is yes. My guess is yes. I think there's an opportunity for the site to make a comeback. And I had the opportunity to speak with Rolf after the online casting panel as well. And, you know, we were talking about how the roles were reversed not that long ago. There were a lot of people who were very angry with Voice 123, very frustrated with a lot of the practices on Voice 123. And Rolf came into VO Atlanta. Uh, you know, the, the poor guy was sent to the wolves. New CEO outside of the industry, doesn't really know the whole history, uh, you know, not familiar with all of the drama and the narratives and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. But he showed up. He took his beatings uh, and he's continued to show up 
and he's continued to listen to the community. Is Voice123 a perfect example of how to run an online casting site? Not in my opinion. Has Voice123 massively improved in how the site works over the last number of years? Yeah, I think if you're looking at it objectively, you would have to agree that that, is, that has absolutely happened. Has Voice123 listened to the community? Yes. Has Voice123 implemented changes that the community has pushed for? Yes. Have they worked hard to find a balance between what the voice actors want and what the voice buyers want and what is in the best interest of them as a, as a business? I think they've done an okay job of that. And so seeing that and, and thinking about that, again, objectively, it makes me feel like there's an opportunity there for the same thing to happen with Voices.com. Now, Jay's the interim CEO. Is he the guy that's going to be there on the long term uh, being a part of all of this? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But one of my philosophies in life and business has always been that I will give everyone the benefit of the doubt until they give me a reason to not. And it's no different here. I will give Jay and for now, Voices.com the benefit of the doubt until they give me a reason to not. He showed up. He took his lumps. He apologized. He didn't have to do any of those things, but he did. And so I respect him for that. And I told him that I respect him for that. He understands there's frustration. He understands there's a, there's a lot of damage that has been done in the past reputationally. Obviously, that is not in the best interest of Voices.com. And so I think that he's going to listen. Does it mean that we're going to get everything we want? Of course not. And, and we shouldn't. Does it mean that there's opportunities for improvement that benefit all sides, which means the, the talent side, the buyer side, and, and the company's bottom line as well? Yeah, I think there's, there's opportunities for that. And so my hope as a community is that we can be a part of that conversation. And in order for us to be a part of that conversation, we got to put our pitchforks down. We have to come to the table rationally. Uh, you know, we need leaders like Nava uh, helping to shape some of those conversations. We need people like J. Michael creating the, the avenues for us to have access and to be able to start some of these conversations. So again, I just see that this was a good first step. Would the community... And the industry as a whole massively benefit from having a second, fully legitimate player in the game. I shouldn't say second, a third, because I, right now I consider uh, Voice123 and Bidalgo to be two totally legitimate players in the game. Uh, but Voices.com is big. You cannot deny the size of that company. You cannot deny the number of auditions that are coming through that platform on a day-to-day -day basis. Right now, I just know that there's a, a lot of voice actors that don't want to play on that platform because they're not happy with the way things have been done in the past. Could some changes to that platform change that? A hundred percent. Would it open up the door to having another huge player, a huge legitimate player in the game? Yes, it would. Is that good for the industry as a whole? Yes, I believe it is. And so that's what I'm hoping for. At this point, that is genuinely what I am hoping for. So I will say to you, listening to the show, if you've been taken advantage of by Voices.com in the past, or you're frustrated by the practices, or you've deleted your profile because of things that went on, there was a lot of us that left the site a number of years ago. All I would say is for now, I would encourage you to Pay attention with an open mind. It's really easy to say that, you know, we should forgive or, or whatever. And, and, you know, obviously I, I believe in that. I would like to see some evidence that shows that there's a genuine effort to change things. Uh, and when I see that evidence that there's a genuine effort to change things, it would certainly make it much easier for me to forgive. Um, I will not personally hold Jay accountable for all of the things that happened in the past when he wasn't there, which goes back to what I said earlier, you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt until he gives me a reason to not. And uh, up to this point, he has not given me a reason to doubt him because he showed up. So does he come to One Voice in Dallas in August with uh, another update? I don't know. Maybe. 
Uh, does he communicate through J. Michael or some other platform to let us know that he heard our concerns that were spoken at VO Atlanta and that changes are being made? Maybe. I'm hopeful. There were a lot of other issues, just to be clear, that were were raised, um, concerns about AI, concerns about terms of service, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to get into all of those things. Um, one thing I will say is Jay was very adamant from the stage. Uh, Karen Guilfrey asked the question, have you ever used our sound files for the creation of or training of AI? Have you ever used our sound files for the creation or training of AI? Uh, and Jay's response, and I, I wrote this down, it was a direct quote, we will never and there was emphasis on never. We will never use those sound files without consent or compensation. I will be definitive of that. That was his response. So all I can do is take him at his word. Uh, again, lots of other things that were discussed, but those two particular issues on the, the escrow and the, the multiple fees and then what is going on with the professional services projects were the two that I was directly involved in. So those were the two things that I felt comfortable speaking about directly. So uh, the drama continues. Um, the fact that I am speaking publicly about Voices.com, uh, considering that I have not even been willing to literally have not been willing to speak their name. I would not even acknowledge their name uh, in my content, in my podcast, in my YouTube live streams, uh, my social medias um, for many years now. Uh, you know, that, that speaks to what is going on here. So I am hopeful. And I think that's all we can be at this point is hopeful. And, uh, you know, we've got, there, there's a seat at the table. Thank you to Jay Michael and VO Atlanta for, for making that possible, uh, that there is a seat at the table to have some conversations. And so now we just need to have those conversations in a, in a respectful, hopefully open hopefully transparent way. Uh, and maybe this is the beginning of some shifts that happen on that platform uh, that make it once again, another great venue. I fully acknowledge that when I was getting started uh, many years ago, voices.com was a big catalyst for me. I booked a lot of work off of that site in the early days before things changed. Uh, it, it, it was a, it was a huge contributor to my career and to my growth. And I would love to have the opportunity to use the platform again. And if some of the changes take place that, uh, you know, we're, we're being told might take place, you might see my name and profile on voices.com. Uh, once again, you know, provided that they remove the ban and, and let me come back. So anyway, that's the update. Uh, for those of you that were at VO Atlanta and you were not able to participate in the online casting panel, uh, once the recording is available, I would encourage you to go back and watch the recording of that online casting panel. And not just for the conversations that happened around voices.com, but you know, Rolf had some really good things to say about voice one, two, three as well. And some, some changes that are happening on the platform. And uh, also uh, he had the opportunity to remind us of some of the changes that have already taken place on the platform. Uh, which again speaks to how far the site has become or, or how far the site has come and what can be accomplished when we have open dialogue. So there you go. That is the update on voices.com. And of course, as uh, things change or if things change and I am privy to those changes, I will certainly do my best to keep you in the loop. <laughs>